Hi, Tobin and Nora. It's Grandma Boy. It's time for a reading session again. And I picked out some of my favorite books once again. And I had an idea. Why don't you think of some of your books that you want me to read? And maybe I can, if I don't have them, I can find them at our library here in the Osho. And I'll read those to you. It's really, really cold tonight. This is January 6th. 2015 so I'm going to read sitting here in front of the wood stove and there may be some background noise from a very agitated big black lab who thinks he needs to go outside and actually he doesn't but we're, we can't convince him of that so he might be making some noise and I'm sorry about that okay some of the books were the books we're reading tonight walls are to be walked by Nathan Zimmelman illustrated by Donald Carrick and I think you will really like this book I just kind of happened to find it um, I think I got it yes I got it at the at a book sale somebody and the three Blairs uh, you know the story about Goldilocks and the three bears this is a variation of that story this is by Marilyn Tallhurst, and the illustrations are by Simone Abel. And another Mercer Mare book. Did you know I like these little Mercer Mare books? Um, all by myself. Things that this little guy can do all by himself. Luella May, she's run away. I have a good friend named Luella. <clears throat> That's a very old-fashioned name. You probably don't have any friends that are named Luella. Um, this story is just, at the end, it's got a real, uh, what, what we call a real twist to it. I think you will like it. Another Clifford book. As you know, just like everybody else on the North American continent, I love Clifford. And another Clifford book, Clifford's Kitten. Now this book, I believe you have, if you give a pig a pancake. And so I'm sure you've read this book yourself, and Mom has read it to you, and Dad's read it to you. But I love this book, so I'm going to read it to you also. Okay, let's get started. Walls are to be walked. This book is about a little boy and his three-block walk to school and all the things he does in just those three blocks. Because there are swings to be swung and new kites have to be flown. But you can't wait for kite season, right? Because balls are not always caught and roll and roll and roll. And there it is. Rolled clear over into the neighbor's yard, it looks like. Because clouds are lions and elephants and camels, if they are watched, and I think, let's see, there's, I think that might, no, that looks like a dog, actually. That must be the camel, that's the elephant. I don't see a lion. Because weeds grow in Miller's Lot and spaceships can be launched by the handful, what is he using for spaceships? He's found a dried up weed that has little pretty little seeds on it that makes him think of spaceships. Because the sidewalk is rayed by cracks which have to be followed every which way. Because bugs chew leaves very slowly and butterflies do not fly in a straight line. Because girls cannot be talked to if someone is watching. Because lunch boxes are easy to forget and have to be gone back for. Well, it's a strange place to leave your lunch box, isn't it? Because walls are to be walked and trees are to be climbed. Because birds' nests need to be looked into, and the flow of water is to be watched. Where's that water coming from? 
looks like they're washing the fire truck. <clears throat> because cats must be caught before they can be patted. Because seven dogs have to be visited every day. Jimmy Jernigan, age six, takes one hour walking the three blocks from his school to his home, even though he runs all the way. Tobin, that little boy is almost, almost your age, or you're almost his age. He'll be six next month. I wanted to just show you a few things I love about the pictures in here. I like that one with the kite. Every picture has a little animal. There was a squirrel, kitty. I love the texture that the artist uses. You can tell those are shingles. And the dried, dried weeds. I think this gentleman really likes nature. The frog, oh, the frog is so cute. I love frogs. Caterpillar, butterfly, just all these little critters in here. Birds. Well, anyway, one of the books that I really love. <clears throat> Somebody and the Three Blairs. Now, while we're reading this, Remember about Goldilocks and the Three Bears and see if you can see how some of these things in this book are the same and some things are different. One, sun one Sunday morning in a small house on the edge of town, Mr. Blair, Mrs. Blair, and Baby Blair were sitting down to breakfast. It's such a fine morning, said Mr. Blair. Let's take a walk in the park. What a good idea, said Mrs. Blair. Feed a duck, said Baby Blair. So they took their coats and a bag of bread crumbs and set out for the park. Why, we've done that, haven't we? Yeah. While they were gone, somebody came to the door. Somebody knocked, and when no one answered, somebody tiptoed in. He sniffed and sniffed. He looked at the breakfast table. This food is too dry, said somebody. This food is too noisy, said somebody. But this food is just right. Okay, it looks like the box of breakfast cereal was too dry. And if you pour milk on it, it's too noisy. He didn't like that. So he found a jar of honey. And that is what bears love, so we are told. He looked for somewhere to sit down. This seat is too hard, said somebody. This seat is too wobbly, said somebody. But this seat is just right. He looked for something to play with. This game is too noisy, said somebody. Well, I imagine it is. Look, he stacked some cans up and knocked them over. This game is too cold, said somebody. He got all the food out of the freezer. But this game is just right. Maybe just right for him, but that is going to be a terrible mess to clean up, isn't it? He looked for something to drink. This rain is too hot, said somebody. This pond is too small, said somebody. But this stream is just right. He looked for somewhere to sleep. This bed is too big, said somebody. This bed is too small, said somebody. But this bed is just right. When Mr. and Mrs. Blair and Baby Blair came back from the park, they saw the breakfast table. Oh, what a mess. Somebody's been eating my crunchies, said Mr. Blair. Somebody's been eating my crispies, said Mrs. Blair. All gone, said Baby Blair. They looked around the room. Somebody's been sitting on my chair, said Mr. Blair. 
Somebody's been sitting on my chair, said Mrs. Blair. Busted, said Baby Blair. They went into the kitchen. Somebody's been emptying the cupboard, said Mr. Blair. Somebody's been raiding the fridge, said Mrs. Blair. Naughty, said Baby Blair. They went upstairs. Uh-oh, I can already see they are going to be met with a mess. Look at the water coming down the stairs. Flood, shouted Mr. Blair. Help, shouted Mrs. Blair. Lot of water, shouted Baby Blair. They looked in the bedroom. It's a burglar, said Mrs. Blair. It's a monster, said Mrs. Blair. It's a big teddy bear, said Baby Blair. It's escaped from the zoo, said Mr. Blair. It's escaped from the circus, said Mrs. Blair. It's escaped down a drain pipe, said Baby Blair. Somebody phone the police, said Mr. Blair. Somebody call the fire department, said Mrs. Blair. Somebody gone home, said Baby Blair. Bye-bye, come again and play tomorrow. There he goes. All by Myself by Mercer Mayer. I can get out of bed all by myself. I can button my overalls. I can brush my fur. I can put on my socks and tie my shoes. Uh-oh. He messed up the shoe tying a little bit, didn't he? I can pour some juice for my little sister and help her eat breakfast. I can pull a duck for her. I can drive my truck. I can ride my bike. I can give a drink to my bear. I can kick my ball and roll on the ground. I can pound with my hammer. I can sail my boat. I can look after my little sister. I can help Dad trim a bush. Uh-oh, not being very careful where he's trimming, is he? he? Needs to be trimming up there. Or ice a cake for Mom. Actually, he's eating the icing. I can look at a book and find a mouse. And that says this is a mouse. I can color a picture. I can put my toys away and get into my pajamas. I can brush my teeth. I can put myself to bed, but I can't go to sleep without a story. Good night. One thing I like about this book, it's got a little animal on just about every page. There's the mouse. Mouse on that page. Mouse in the drawer. There's the mouse's tail. He's right there behind the door with the mirror. There's the mouse helping with the shoes. And the mouse. There's a mouse with an umbrella in case he wants to go over that direction. He doesn't want to get wet. There he is with, with his umbrella up so she doesn't throw her breakfast on him. <coughs> And there he is with the little stop sign. And there he is. And there. And this, oh, in the little sailboat. And here we have the butterfly and the mouse and a dragonfly and some birds too. Mouse there. Mouse stealing a little frosting. Mouse, mouse. There he is. There he is. There he is. Hmm. 
Oh, look, he's sleeping in the shoe. And under the bed, I see the little mouse hole that he has chewed in the wall. I like that book. Okay, Luella May, she's run away. Luella May, she's run away. Look in the cornfields, look in the hay. Where, oh where, is Luella May? Fetch the old hound dog, fetch all your kin. Luella May's run away again. She's not in the cornfields, she's not in the hay. Where, oh where, is Luella May? Round up the horses, hitch up the team. Hop on the buckboard and look by the, I wonder what word they're going to use there. It's going to rhyme with team. Round up the horses, hitch up the team. Hop in the buckboard and look by the stream. Now when we read the next few pages, maybe when we get to the last word, you can predict what that last word is going to be. Has anyone seen her? Now where could she be? Go look in the hollowed out trunk of that you're right, tree. Set down your washboard, your needles and yarn and see if she's hiding out there in the, what do you think? Barn. She's not by the stream nor the barn nor the tree. Where, oh where could Luella May be? In the woods, there's a shadow. Go look over there, for she gets swallowed up by a big old black, hmm, you're right, bear. Did somebody snatch her, a banshee or witch, or did she get caught in the vines by the ditch? Run, tell the neighbors, and y'all give a yell, for she wanders off yonder and falls in the... That's got to rhyme with yell. What do you think it might be? Well, has anyone seen her? Does anyone know? Where, oh, where did Luella May go? Look, is that her? Is she lost on the ridge? Or could she be stuck in the muck neath the bridge? We've looked. We can't find her. Not here and not there. Is she this way or that way or which way or where? Night falls a-coming. Oh, mercy, I swan. It looks like Luella May really is gone. Hey, Ma, go tell Pa, Uncle Henry, and Chubb. We found her. She's sleeping inside the... Got to ride with Chubb. What do you think it is? Tub. So the little twist at the end of this book is, you think Luella May is a little girl who runs away, and they have to go out looking for her sometimes. But Luella May is actually a pig. And aren't those little pigs cute? Okay, Clifford makes a friend. The boy sees the dog. The dog sees the boy. The boy runs. The dog runs. The boy jumps. Well, what do you think Clifford's going to do? I think he's going to jump. The dog jumps. The boy and the dog spin and spin and spin. I wonder if you've ever done that. Spin till you get dizzy and you can't stand up. The boy makes a face. The dog makes a face. The boy laughs. The dog licks the boy. He likes boys who laugh. 
The boy does a cartwheel. So does the dog. They are friends. Of course, you remember Clifford's first friend is Emily Elizabeth. That must be a neighbor boy. Clifford's kitten. I'm Emily Elizabeth. This is my dog Clifford. He's the only pet I ever had. Except one time last year, a kitten came to our house. I think he was lost. Mom said we could keep him until we found his owners. He was so small that Mom said he could sleep in my room. He slept in the basket Clifford had used for a bed when he was a puppy. I think Clifford was a little jealous. He won't fit in that bed anymore, will he? That night Clifford slept as close to me as he could get. Mom said the kitten would have to sleep out next to Clifford until his owners. Oh. Excuse me. Mom said the kitten would have to sleep out next to Clifford until his owners came to get him. He was a playful little kitten. He chased butterflies. Clifford chased butterflies too. He saw a very big one. Was that really a butterfly? I don't think so. See. He caught it. Dad paid the boy for his kite. Kittens love to play with spools. Clifford had never played with the spool. He found one in the street. Oh my, Clifford was too strong. We bought fancy cat foods. The kitten just turned up his nose at them. That means he didn't eat it. <clears throat> Thank goodness Clifford isn't a picky eater. I took the kitten for a ride in my doll carriage. I never did that for Clifford. Clifford wanted to ride too. While I was explaining why I couldn't push him, the kitten jumped out of the carriage and started across the street. Oh no, what do you think will happen? Clifford was right there. He saved the kitten, didn't he? Betty wrecked the car. The kitten didn't even say thank you. He just sharpened his claws. Clifford tried to sharpen his claws. Oops. That didn't work, did it? Clifford must think he's a tiny kitten. While Clifford was busy putting the light pole back, a big dog came into our yard and growled at the kitten. He didn't notice Clifford. Well, he notices him now, doesn't he? The big dog decided to go back to his house to play. While I was hugging the kitten, a little boy rode up. He said, oh, you found my cat. Thank you. I've been looking all over for him. That sure was a cute kitten. I hated to see him go. Well, I still have a pretty good dog. Do you ever think about having a dog that big? Bigger than a horse? Bigger than an elephant, maybe, even? Okay, this will be the last one we read tonight, Tobin and Nora. If You Give a Pig a Pancake by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. You'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably get all sticky. So she'll want to take a bath. Well, no wonder she got all sticky. Look how she eats. She's almost pouring it on herself. But that's okay. Pigs, pigs might enjoy that kind of thing. I don't know. She'll ask you for some bubbles. When you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. You'll have to find your rubber duck. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. 
She might feel homesick and want to visit her family. She'll want you to come too. She'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed. When she's under your bed, she'll find your old tap shoes. She'll try them on. She'll probably need something special to wear with them. When she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. You'll play your very best piano piece and she'll start dancing. Then she'll want you to take her picture. So you'll have to get your camera. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. Then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps and take her to the mailbox. On the way, she'll see the tree in your backyard. She'll want to build a tree house. Of course she will. So you'll have to get her some wood, a hammer, and some nails. When the tree house is finished, she'll want to decorate it. She'll, now that's a pretty fancy tree house. Look at that. You could just about live in that. She'll ask for wallpaper and glue. When she gets the wallpaper, when she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. Feeling sticky will remind her of your, your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if she asks you for some syrup, what do you think? She'll want something to go with it. What do you think that is? She'll want a pancake to go with it. And I want you to see how tired this little girl is after chasing around that cute little pig all day, do, doing everything the little pig wanted to do. She is so tired. Oh, that's okay. I think she had a good day. That's it for reading for tonight, Tobin and Nora. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. Um, I know it's got to be very, very cold where you are too, and I hope you're staying warm. And um, we love you very much. Tell Mommy and Daddy we love them too. And we will see you as soon as we can. Maybe next month, I hope. Okay? Good night. Night, guys. Love you.